perfect. So uh, let's share that. Hashtag 2018. Done. All right. So um, welcome, everyone. Uh, hope you had a good breakfast. Uh, today, I want to talk about another hashtag, no office. So uh, I want to uh, give you some benefits of why this works, how this works, and, this, and that it could be actually done. So before I start, um, uh, my name is Michael Slewinski. I'm the founder uh, of Nosby. It's a productivity tool. We're all about productivity and getting stuff done. Uh, we've been doing this for the last 11 years. And we've got apps for all the platforms, including the Apple Watch. Um, but today, I won't be talking at all about my app, because I want to focus not on what we do, but how we do it. So uh, uh, we don't have an office. We've never had one. And as you can see on the left side, these are our offices, people uh, who work at Nosby in the core team. We've got people from Spain, from Germany, from Poland, from all over Poland. Uh, there is a person from Taiwan, but they don't you know, fit in the map. Um, and, uh, and then we have uh, regular co uh, collaborators from the USA, from France, from the Netherlands, from all over the place. And as you can see on the right side, these are our customers. And uh, uh, the blue customers are the American ones. The green ones are Polish, and the yellow are Japanese. So uh, yeah, kind of difficult to pinpoint our customers, actually, and then the rest of the world. So. Um, we can, we do, we've been doing this for the last 11 years, and we work like that because we believe that work is not a place to go. It's a thing that you do, right? So it's the job is not where you're going. Job is your job, is what you're doing, right? And um, whenever I tell this story to anyone, they're like, yeah, Michael, that's nice. You know, you have this small team of, you know, 20-something, 30 people. You know, it works for you. You're like a unicorn, right? I mean, you have just this one product and nothing else. Your business is not complicated. Our business is complicated. We are serious business, you know. What you're doing is, you know, it's nice that you're doing that, right? Um, so they basically tell me uh, to grow up. That, you know, at some point I'm going to grow up, my business is going to grow up, and we will need a proper office a proper serious business. You know, 11 years in, doesn't count. You've got, you have to grow up. So the problem, maybe we're just growing up wrong. I don't know. I, or I have trouble growing up. Hard to say. But then again, I, after that, I give an example of different companies. You know, there's a company called Buffer, which is more than twice our size, and they dropped their office. They don't have an office as well. There's MySQL who have just a few remote offices, and they, they all work remotely. Or maybe Automatic. Automatic are the makers of WordPress, and these are their offices, or were their offices, which they completely shut down because nobody was going there. Like They've set up the company completely remotely with 700 people, with a big WordPress that runs, you know, I don't know, one third of the internet, and, and many other products that they do. So, I would argue that their business is vastly more complicated than, than mine, yet they still do it without an office. So um, with all that, why would you want to go no office? Why would you want to you know, try to work remotely or encourage you know, yourself or your boss or, or your employees to, to work remotely, uh, to, to, uh, to drop the office? So um, one of the reasons I would say, is to not be so stressed. Because like just today, getting to Gdansk here to, to this conference, uh, we were stuck in a traffic jam. Whenever I'm stuck in a traffic jam, I'm sitting there in the car, and I'm like, wow. People have to do it every day? Really? Uh, I don't. I don't have a traffic jam because my home office is upstairs. So it's, like I, 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 it's just one staircase, right? So there's no traffic jam there, especially that my kids are at school. So, uh, uh, you, you save stress in commuting, you save time not going to work, and when you think about it, you know, we are all in, uh, uh, intellectual workers, we are all information workers, uh, like most of us, we are not factory workers. So, 
uh, we are paid to be using our minds. So does it really make sense that you're going from one place to another to sit in front of a computer? Like, don't you have a computer at home? Or can't you have a computer at home? Um, second, lifestyle choice. Um, one of my favorite examples was when I hired an assistant, uh, Magda. I hired her, and she was in Warsaw. She was based in Warsaw, so in the capital. So she was really used to working, to going to an office. And when I hired her, she was like, so what do I do now, Michael? And I was like, yeah, well, you work for me. Yeah, but where do I go? <laughs> you don't go anywhere. You just work for me. And it was strange for her. I understand that. I appreciate that. But then later, uh, when, um, uh, like after half a year, she, she asked me for a, for a conference call. And she said, Michael, you know, I've been always dreaming to, to live in France. Can I move to France? So I had to ask her this important question, this, you know, this very important question that she didn't ex expect, but it was, it was important to ask it. Do they have internet in France? She said yes. So I assume they have internet in France, because she moved to France, and she was working for me for the next two years in France. I didn't care. I didn't know where she was, actually, in France. Um, uh, but she was happy, and I was happy because she was still working for me. So again, it's a lifestyle choice. We had this moment in our company where like, between one meeting and another meeting, like in half a year, seven people out of 25 were moving or considering moving. Here, Ola from our team is, is, is here in the audience. She moved from Poznan to Gdańsk uh, while working for me. So like, you know, no problem. Again. Um, the cool, the cool thing for an, for an old business owner, for a manager, is that you can hire from anywhere. Like the best part of our hiring process is the, is the fact that uh, we get to hire the best people for the job. We don't care where they live. We have countless stories of really getting fantastic people from the, the, the end of Poland, you know, because they didn't want to move. You know, they had job offers from Warsaw, but they didn't want to go to Warsaw. So we snapped them. It, they're ours. Um, and here on this slide, there are five people uh, from, from my company. All of them are from different cities in, in Poland. Uh, again, flexible working hours. I mean, this is something we've, we should be having anyway. Uh, when you think about it, you know, especially in winter in Poland, uh, you, ha you wake up and you go to work, it's dark. You leave your office, it's dark. <laughs> it's just dark, and you're like in a cave, right? Uh, in my company, you don't. You can just, you know, in the middle of the day when it's sunshine, you can just go out for a walk, for a jog, and then come back and work again. So you really have this flexibility that normally you wouldn't have. And for me, particularly, the most important argument as a productivity guy and a productivity nerd is you get more focused time. Because when you work in your home office, there are no interruptions. People don't you know, pat you on the shoulder and ask you things. If you want to finish your article or something that you have to finish, you can basically shut down internet and just work on this, right? Or shut down communication. You know, when you close Slack or, or Nosby, like, there is no push notifications. You can just work uh, completely focused. And this is a big one, because you know, in this day and age, you know, there is this saying that uh, you don't get anything done in an office after 10 AM, because everybody comes in. There are interruptions, uh, meetings, and, and all this stuff. So for me, this is a big deal, that you can get really big chunks of focused time. And again, weren't we paid, aren't we paid to do focused work, to work with our minds? So that's why today I want to challenge you and ask you this question. What is work? Like, is it really where you have to go? Uh, or is it, uh, is it a thing that you do? And um, let's flip the coin now. And and ask a question why you still might need an office. Well, there are several reasons. One of the ridiculous ones is that you, have, you want to put your big sign on the building because you like it, you know? We are a big business now. We have this sign, right? Um, so another reason is that you, you might want to you know, interact more. You want to have the ping pong tables and foosball tables and all this stuff. And again, this, this is, this is the, the photo of uh, WordPress automatic offices. Uh, which they shut down, because even though they had the football and ping pong and all this stuff, nobody was going there. So maybe, but again, is this work? Like, <laughs> you know, it's part of work, it's fun, but is this work? 
and I want to tell you more about you know hobbies and stuff a little bit later. Anyway, and maybe customers want to visit you, right? I mean, you might want to have an office because customers might want to visit you. And in some cases, that's true. You might need an office for that. But in most cases, like they have the app stores, they have my nosby.com website, they don't need to visit me. And when they are from Japan, I mean, they, they will not come. I mean, you know, to be honest, they will not come. They don't care. They are too busy getting their stuff done. They want to just sign up, use our tool, and that's it. They don't care where we are, where we are based. And I think in our minds, we are just too stuck in this, think, in, in this thinking that, you know, an office is so important, you know, we need to show off. Um, but we don't. We, like, we need to show off with, with a great website, with a great sales proposition, but not with a great office. Another reason you might need an office for is that you might need to, you know, to do real work with a real person, right? Because for some reason, the, the, the photo on the left is real work, because there are many people here. And on the right, because we use video conferencing, this is not real work. This is fake work, right? Well, I don't think like that. I think uh, both are real work, even though we're not there. So, um, ooh, I didn't plan that. Sorry about that. Uh, nice. OK. Again, you might need an office because you can run meetings. Because when you're already there physically, let's do a meeting, right? OK, who here on this audience loves meetings and wants more meetings? Nobody? OK, so who wants less meetings? You know, uh, right? Right? Exactly. And the thing is, when you're physically, and, you're, and people are really engaged when they're in a meeting, right? Like really engaged. Nobody's dozing off or anything like that, no. Uh, so that's the thing. We have too many meetings, but we do them because it's like default. It's, 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 it's because we are already there. Let's do a meeting instead of just let's work on something, present it, and then and, 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 and decide. Instead of just let's brainstorm, you know? The, 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 this, this, this fallacy of, of, of you know, brainstorming together. So, um, so my question again is this, when you work with somebody, do you need their body, do you need their, their physical presence to be there, or do you need their mind, you know, do you need their, their ideas? Like, what do you really need when you work with somebody? That's a question I sh you know, we should be asking. And then, these two types of work don't seem so ridiculous. So, I want to, you know, to wrap it up, I want to I wanna give you I want to give you a, you know, a, a glimpse of how it is, uh, you know, in my experience, 11 years doing this remote work all the time, having no office at all, how, I mean, how does it feel? How does it feel, really? Because it's, it's better to, to say this instead of just giving you the benefits. So, first of all, your coolness is your quality of work, not the jeans that you have, the outfit you have in the office. This is not how you're cool. In an office environment, you're cool because you're doing great work. Uh, and, and this is a big deal because, again, everybody wants to contribute and, and that's the only thing they have to show. So, uh, so this way, you're the cool guy because you've invented this idea, because you've come up with this idea, because you've done that. This, this is why you're cool, not because you're fancy and you're fashionable. Second, uh, you can fake productivity by going to meetings and being loud, asking questions, you know, talking to people and everything, and then, yeah, this guy is, you know, he's, he's good, he's good, right? Now, uh, in the no-office no office environment, your, uh, your, your work speaks louder than words. You are loud because you're delivering great work, not because you're loud on the meeting. Actually, if you're quiet on the meeting, it makes more sense. Um, And it, like, in the end of the day, what, how we connect in our company, we connect with people, like, we like people who are good, who are not, not and, and, and they're also nice, <laughs> but who are good, who are good professionals, who know their, their stuff. Th this is how we connect with people. This is, uh, this is you know, how, um, uh, how we really make friends. And as you can see, you have seen uh, throughout this presentation, we do meet. It's not like we completely don't see each other. We meet every half a year, uh, what we call Nosby reunion. So we meet every half a year for a week. Um, we rent a hotel and we're there. And, and, but that's, that's basically all the physical contact that we need. 
Yeah, we meet every half a year. We spend time together. We, we work together. We play together. And then we work for, for the next half a year until the next uh, meeting. We just had one in Ustroń, which was very nice. And now we'll have another, another one in the fall. And, um, and when you work like that, you're looking forward to meet, uh, you know, to, to this physical meeting because you want to see the person you've been working with. You want to see this person that you admire so much because they, they've been doing so, so much great work. Um, another benefit of no office is that you have a better social life because if you're, you know, I'm an extrovert, I like spending time with people, yet I still prefer no office because I work, I can focus on my stuff, I can get stuff done, and after work, I can plan a social life. I'm a triathlete, uh, I bike, I run with friends, you know, I spend time with friends, you know, I choose people I spend time with after work. So there is a big distinction for me, you know, work time, my colleagues at work, and then my friends after work. And I get to ride bicycles, you know, train for triathlons. I have another one coming in two, in two weeks. So, you know, this is fun. This is, this is, you know, what I like about my work, that I get to do this. I, I, I don't have to be stuck 12, hour, 12 hours in an office. I, after, after work, I can actually, you know, do something or spend time with my family. Um, so, again, you know, work is not a place to go. It's a thing that you do. Um, I'm going to be <laughs> repeating this phrase over and over so that it sticks. Um, and as you can see, um, offices don't have to be really professional. This is my first home office, uh, one year after I launched Nosby. It was a corner de IKEA desk uh, in my living room. Uh, and I remember my, mo my mom calling me and asking me, Michael, what are you actually doing? Because my friends' uh, sons are CEOs, managers, and whatever. And I was uh, uh, running a team of three at that moment, and I said, I'm a CEO of a global company so that my mom feels better about myself. So anyway, um, uh, there is a problem, though. When you work in a no-office environment and you don't see people you work with, there is no control. How do you control people? Because, of course, when there's somebody sitting next to you in front of a computer, you're sure they're working, right? They're not on, they're not on Facebook, right? Or Instagram or whatever. No, they are working, right? Because they're sitting there, right? You have 100% control over that, right? Well, you don't, because what really matters is trust. So, yeah, my people, they can be traveling, for what I know. They can be you know, on the beach, you know, sipping pina colada and working, or pretending to work, for what I know. But their results matter. So, uh, and what my friend Michał Szafrański is trying to argue, that trust is better than control. And if you don't know about it, you don't get his book. You know, I recommend it. It's very good. So instead of saying trust is good, but control is better, I would argue that control is good, but trust is so much better. Because in the end of the day, do you want to work with people that you trust, or do you want to work with people that you have to control? Right? Well, for me, trust wins every time. So I'm not saying you should drop your offices right now. But why not think of them as additional tools that you have, right? And an office is just a tool. It's a place, uh, you know, where you get to hang out if you need to. If you, then you do a meeting if you need to. That it's, a, it's a tool when there is a customer coming from Japan, you invite them there to a conference room. Uh, but it's just a tool. It's not a requirement. It's not like, if I don't have an office, I don't count. I don't have a serious business if I don't have an office. So... Um, I, I would argue, you know, at the end of this presentation, I, I don't have time to not, today to just tell you how to do it. I'm writing uh, about it on my blog, I'm talking about it on my podcast, so make sure to, you know, to follow me on social media um, uh, as to how. But I wanna, what I want to leave you, leave you with today is the fact that why not design the whole communication of your company, the way you communicate, the way you work, so that you could work remotely? so that you could stay at home and still work and still be productive and still have access to company data, to company information. Because, in, you know, it's 2018. You know, we have all the technology we need, you know. My iPhone is more powerful than my computer, like, you know, five years ago. So we really have all technology, but the problem with no office is that our mindset. We are still stuck in this mindset that we need an office. So let's try to design the way you work, the way you communicate, uh, in a way that um, 
that it enables remote work. And at the end of the day, you might realize that Office is just a tool, but it's not a requirement for you to get the job done. So thank you so much. Hope, uh, I hope you'll, you, 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 you'll, try, you'll try no office or at least think about it. So thank you so much and have a great conference.